let's take at a look to see if God has, if there's a certain pattern God has in raising up prophets related to time prophecy. Uh, I think this is quite exciting um, because it shows us that God indeed has seemed to have a certain pattern um, in dealing with time prophecies. Because we see, if we look to the time prophecies of the Bible, we see many times that God had came with a message about judgment, he raised up a prophet to preach this, and uh, it was also linked to time, as I said. And then we will see that when this is about to fulfill, right before he raises up another prophet, the same message about judgment, and, and then it becomes present truth. Before he wasn't, because the first prophet told a prophecy about it later on. It was supposed to come. So it became present truth with a second prophet. And we see several interesting examples like this. Um, and also we see that as a result, the remnant was drawn out. So let's, let's see. Uh, yeah, here you see uh, on the screen. First, uh, the first prophet came with a message of judgment, linked to time prophecy. Second one came with the same message, made it present truth, and the remnant is drawn out. Let's take a look at Enoch. In Jude, which is only one chapter, verses, one, uh, verses 14 and 15, Jude 14 and 15, it says, Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men also, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. Okay, so he's talking about Enoch. Uh, and uh, here, also you see a message of judgment they're referring to. But where, if, where do we find this prophecy in the Old Testament? This is the New Testament talk, referring back to Enoch. He prophesied a message of judgment. We have to dig deeper in order to find this. Genesis 5. In Genesis 5, we'll start reading from verse 21 and then 27. It says, Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. And all the days of Methuselah were 969 years and he died. Mark this. Methuselah became 969 years old. This is the point. And he's a son of Enoch. And uh, in biblical times, uh, there are many examples from... In, in, only in the book of Genesis you find more than 75 times the name of someone had an important significance. So let's take a look at the name of Methuselah. Methuselah is made up of two words. I don't know if I pronounced it correctly, but uh, Muth and Shalak. And Muth means to die. Shalak means to send. So, Methuselah would mean, according to many scholars, when he dies, it will be sent. When he dies, it will be sent. What will be sent? Uh, there are some scholars that uh, would not, uh, I found, would not agree with this, but there are, there are some, some good scholars that are saying that this is indeed the case. Uh, if you look in the, in the Greek explanation of Methuselah, it, it looks uh, clearer. Uh, the meaning of the name for this. But anyhow, but we will see that this actually fits very well what we will discover. Genesis 5 again, verse 25 this time. Maybe some of you could read that. Uh, Genesis 5, 25, and then 27 to 29. Yes, do we have a mic? Okay, good. One hundred and eighty-seven years and begot Lamech. 
Okay, and 27 to 29. Yeah. All the days of Methuselah were 969 years, and he died. Lamech lived 182 years and had a son. And he called his name Noah, saying, This one will comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord has cursed. Okay. And then we read, then you can read uh, chapter 7, verse 6 also. Noah was 600 years old when the floodwaters were on the earth. Okay, so here are many numbers. And let's bring this all together so we understand, because this is the point. Methuselah became, became 969 years. He lived 187 years and got Lamech. And Lamech lived 182 years and got Noah. Okay, if we add this together, yes, 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 yeah, yeah, sorry, it's actually correct. Methuselah lived 187 years and got Lamech. Lamech lived 182 years and got Noah. Mm -hmm. And then we see that Noah was 600 years when the flood came, and that equals 969 years, which is the age of Methuselah. And maybe hard to see at, at, at times, so let's take it again. Methuselah became red 969 years. And we also read in these verses, uh, that he lived 187 years and got Lamech, and Lamech lived 182 years and got Noah, and Noah was 600 years when the flood came. So when you add them, you come to the same year, in other words, when the flood came, this is the same year as Methuselah died. And what was his name again? When it comes, uh, when he dies, he shall send it, sorry, when... When he dies, when Methuselah dies, he, it, it shall come, or he shall send it. Uh, here is it. When he dies, it will be sent. Okay. So, did God raise up another prophet? This is, so this is a prophecy within the name, in a sense, a prophecy for the flood. We saw that in a kind of prophecy of judgment. So this was a prophecy for the flood. But did God raise up another prophet to to make this present truth right before the flood? Who preached the same? Noah, right? He preached the same message. Judgment. We see here, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. And spare not the old world, but save Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Hebrews eleven seven. So, well, Noah was a preacher of righteousness, that's the point. So he was... He, he, he was clear, uh, clearly uh, coming with a prophetic message. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the, which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, or the righteousness which is by faith. So he had a message through Enoch, through the name of his son, uh, the God son, and uh, then we see that he. He, uh, made, uh, Noah was raised up right before it was going to happen, right before uh, the fulfillment of this prophecy uh, that made it present truth. Are you with me so far, or is it a little bit confusing? Okay, good. Just ask if you don't understand or if I should repeat something. Uh, okay, so then we have Abraham in Genesis chapter 15. I'll just refer to this for the sake of time, so uh, we'll not. But well, you can look it up if you want. So in, in Genesis 15:13, we see about a prophecy uh, given to Abraham, and he said to Abraham, "Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge." God says. So is this a message of judgment? Yes. Is it a time prophecy? Yes. 400 years. Referring to the captivity in Egypt. And uh, we see um, we see that also it's a prophecy that they will go back uh, in uh, verse 16. Uh, it says, the, in the fourth generation they shall come hither again, they shall come back again. Okay, so did God raise up another prophet to make this present truth when it was time? 
What do we know? In Hosea chapter 12, verse 13, it says that God raised up, or by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Who was this prophet? Who led the people out of Egypt? Moses, right? Exodus 3, 1 to 2. Uh, we read about this when God was calling him. Uh, the, you remember the, the, the burning bush? That's when God started speaking to him and he said, Bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. So Moses was raised up, made his prophecy present truth, called them out, and God took care and to, to judge the Egyptians. A remnant was called out. Uh, God took, up the rem- took out the remnant. Um, we have more examples. Jeremiah. In Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 11 to 12, we see a prophecy about 70 years. 70 years. And we see, it says, And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. And it shall come to pass when the 70 years are accomplished that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, says the Lord, for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans and will make it perpetual desolations. You see a message of judgment here? He will punish the king of Babylon and that nation and so on. And also we know that it was a judgment on Israel. Uh, We're going to get into that more tomorrow or the day after a little bit. Um, so it's a message of judgment also. Uh, and uh, it's a time prophecy. Did God raise up someone to make it present truth when they were captives in Babylon? Daniel, Daniel right? Da- where do you remember where he discovered it? Daniel 9. Daniel 9. That's when da- Daniel is studying this and, and he's seeing that God gave a prophecy through Jeremiah about 70 years, and he prayed, asked for forgiveness for his people, on behalf of his people. He said, we have sinned. And we're going to take a look at this uh, more later on in the week. But, but um, he said, I understood, or uh, he understood by the books, the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. And this was in the very end. This was in the very end of this time prophecy that Daniel got this message, discovered this message. And God was speaking through, uh, to, uh, he says in Israel that he stirred up the, the spirit in Cyrus, spoke to him to let them go. You know, come with this decree now. You need to come with this decree to let your people go back. Or, or my people go back. So that was what God was doing. Um, Okay. Did Daniel have another prophecy? I had several. He had several. But uh, in Daniel chapter 9, same chapter, what was this prophecy about? Time prophecy? 70 weeks, right? Mm -hmm. 70 Mm -hmm. weeks. And what is this prophecy about? About Christ. And about God's people, the Jews. Is there a judgment? Certain judgment on the Jews here? It says, repent from, from your sins. It will be 70 weeks until... Uh, from going forth to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the Messiah, the Prince, there shall be 7 weeks and 62 weeks. So we'll, we'll look at this prophecy later on. But the point is, it says, after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off uh, and so on, and uh, basically it's a, it's a call for repentance to the Jews. They had 419 years to repent. Um, this is a message of judgment and time-based. Who did God raise up to, to come uh, to make his present truth right before the 400, this was a fulfillment, the 419 years? Mark chapter 1 who is speaking there in the beginning of Mark? John the Baptist. Repent. What is he saying? Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. He was saying the same thing. Look, the kingdom of God is at hand. And Jesus himself, he also preaches, repent. Now it's time. The time has come. What time? 
the time of the fulfillment of this prophecy, you have still some chance to repent. Okay? And John the Baptist said in John chapter 1, 29, Behold the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world. And then he came with a third prophecy based on time. And this one, you know, Daniel 8, 14, what does it say there? Daniel. Yeah, oh, sorry, I have. He said unto me, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Okay. Did God raise up a prophet in the end of this prophecy? Isn't that exciting? We could, we could expect to see the prophet to be raised up during this time because this is a message of judgment again we could expect God to raise up a prophet in the end of the 2,300 2, days to make this present truth did he do that? yes Ellen White but uh, so okay it looks like this is these slides doesn't look as nice as uh, they should. Um, well, basically, here's a repetition of what we looked at. The prophecy was given. Message after Methuselah was born. Noah preaches the prophecy and makes it present truth. A message through Abraham. And then God raises up Noah, uh, sorry, Moses, and preaches and fulfills this prophecy and makes it present truth. Message through Jeremiah, the 70 years. Daniel finds the prophecy and makes his present truth, a prophet of God. Message through Daniel, uh, about the 70 weeks, a new message. And John the Baptist was raised and preaches his prophecy, a message of judgment again. Then we have a message through Daniel, again, the sanctuary, the 2300 days, the day of atonement. The investigative judgment that was to take place after 2,300 years was to start. And then Ellen White is raised up by God in the 1844, in December, she has her first vision. And she, let's see if she talks about the same message. Here's a quote from Great Controversy, page 417. The question, what is the sanctuary, is clearly answered in the scriptures. The term sanctuary as used in the Bible refers first to the tabernacle built by Moses as a pattern of heavenly things and secondly to the true tabernacle in heaven to which the earthly sanctuary pointed. At the death of Christ, the typical service ended. The true tabernacle in heaven is the sanctuary of the new covenant and of the prophecy of Daniel 8.14 is fulfilled as the prophecy of Daniel 8, 14 is fulfilled in this dispensation, the sanctuary to which it refers must be the sanctuary of the new covenant. So she speaks about the same prophecy. But let's take a look just for the record about some people that also stood up during this time. We have here some leaders of different movements in the 1800s, and I have arranged them by birth. Joseph Smith, one who's, who... Uh, we can, the founder of, of the Mormons, you know, he got this, he, 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 uh, he could not see the doctrines, according to his own belief, to, um, that he found from the Bible to fit with any church. So he started a new movement. Um, and then you have, uh, he got his first vision, by the way, in the, around the 1820s. And then you have Charles Darwin, known by all. He was coming with a theory of evolutionism. Um, and then you have Karl Marx, which was the leader of, or founder of Marxism, quite logically. In 1821, you have Mary Baker, Eddie, which kind of uh, was the founder of, uh, she was the founder of Christian science. Uh, and this is kind of an extreme, I would say, movement. They are, for instance, they, they don't accept any medical, um, any medical help from the medical system in the countries, and they just think prayer is enough. That's one example. So that movement came. And then you have and Andrew Jackson Davis. Um, he played a, a, a key, or he played a key role uh, of the development of spiritism. Then you have Charles, Charles Russell, 1852, uh, which is the founder of the movement which turned into be the Jehovah's Witnesses. Then you have Edgar Case. 
he, his ideas led to the New Age movement. And finally, Ellen White, born in 1827, first vision in 1844, December. Uh, so you can see here, Christ warned, he said, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Look at this list here. And why so many around this date? Why so many around 1844? Well, I believe when God wants to raise up a true prophet, Satan comes with many counterfeits, counteracts. He's trying to, to distract people from the present truth which Ellen White brought in. Because we know that, because this is what Daniel talked about, she was the only one of these that talked about this message. Because as Adventists, we, we have this unique message of the sanctuary, the cleansing of the sanctuary, started in 1844. No other movement, as far as I know, except maybe there, maybe there are some small ones, but they, I mean, they don't have this view. We are unique in this, as Adventists. So imagine, um, imagine that you are, you're having vacation, you're by the sea. And you have seen, you have watched the news on television, and the news says there's going to come a great storm. Don't, uh, you have to leave this area, they have said. You have to leave this area. But you think, and many others think, well, it cannot be that bad. You know, the sun is shining. I don't see anything. I don't see any clouds. Um, and you decide to go to the beach. And there you have the red flag, and, the, the, and there you have... Some lifeguards here say, don't swim, you know, it's going to come a storm. You hear it the second time. And this is some days later. And sure enough, you see the clouds coming. And you look, this is what God is doing. He's giving the same message twice. First time, you know, he really wants us, he really wants to get our attention. He is gracious enough to warn us more than once. And uh, this actually happened, something similar to this, in a, uh, in a small city, I can't remember the name, a while back, maybe some of you have heard of it. They, they heard there was a storm was coming, but people were like, ah, it has never been something like this before here, so why would that come, and the sun is shining? But then it took the whole city. Okay, now we're going to go over to the last thing for today, and uh, we still have some time, so that's good. Uh, we're going to take a look at, let's see, I'll just get up the PowerPoint. Well, before I start, let me again ask you if you have any questions, what you're looked at. Is it clear to you? Do it make sense? I, I really like this, this Bible study of the, you can expect to see a prophet rising, Ellen White. That's really amazing. Okay. Anyhow, you can ask me later if you think of something.